Hello teacher friends. From the CESA STEM team, we'd like to say thank you for joining us and to thank the Australian Government Department of Education for funding this series of workshops. In this workshop, we're diving into the awesome world of technologies and how they can impact our lives globally as they are used to solve problems. We will explore some wicked problems that have been encountered by STEM professionals, discuss the attitudes that we need to tackle these problems and give examples of big questions you might explore in the classroom. We're also going to introduce you to an amazing project that is aiming to solve the problem of increasing girls' involvement in STEM professions. We hope that you'll find some useful examples of real world problems to discuss and explore in the classroom and be able to consider the problem solving skills and dispositions that are needed to solve them. I'd like to pay my respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the land on which the University of Adelaide campuses are built and also to the, acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which I work and live. At some stages throughout the video, we provide prompts for discussions. Feel free to stop the video at any point to discuss how the examples could be used in your classroom. We're talking about how amazing it is to be the tech savvy heroes that Australia needs right now. The ones who make smart decisions about tech and help build a sustainable future and solve both big and small questions. Imagine having the power to create and shape the world around you through technology. Well, that's exactly what we're aiming for. We want students not just to use technology, but to understand it, question it, and create amazing stuff with it. It's not just about learning the latest gadget, but also it's to understanding how technology affects things like fairness, ethics, and personal values. Plus, we're all about developing the kind of mindset that helps us tackle challenges. Think curiosity, resilience, adaptability, the superhero qualities we need to navigate the tech landscape and create solutions. As students experiment, problem solve and create, they are also needing some real world skills. We're encouraging students who can think critically, solve problems and make a positive impact on the world. At the core of the Australian Technologies curriculum is the concept of creating solutions for preferred futures. STEM ways of thinking includes system thinking, design thinking, and computational thinking, and are represented in the curriculum as core concepts that allow students to become problem solvers. Ever heard of wicked problems? They're like these super tricky challenges in our world that don't have easy answers. Think of them as puzzles where the pieces keep changing shape, where there are many possible answers. Here's an example of a wicked problem being addressed by a project called Curious Minds. I'm Kelsey Dad, the Program Director with Curious Minds. Curious Minds is an invitational program aimed at highly capable girls and non-binary students in years 9 and 10 who have an interest in STEM learning areas, that is science, technology, engineering and maths. The program is jointly delivered by the Australian Maths Trust and Australian Science Innovations. It is a national program funded by the Federal Government Department of Education. The program is targeted towards students who are underrepresented in STEM because they live in areas that are economically disadvantaged, are regional or remote, or the students identify as First Nations. Our program combines two hands-on STEM extension camps and a six-month mentoring program where participants are matched with a STEM professional. The program provides a unique opportunity for students to meet like-minded young people who share an interest in STEM and make lifelong connections along the way. The students are exposed to new ideas and concepts and challenged to try new things. The program introduces students to a range of STEM pathways and careers and empowers them to make a future as a STEM professional. Curious Minds STEM coaches recently responded to the question, what makes me strong in STEM? And responses highlighted the dispositions or characteristics of good problem solvers. Being curious allows a problem solver 
to consider the end needs of the end user. Accepting that the end of a project may be far off and that you need to keep learning whilst trying to solve a problem. Being organised and having a plan with clear goals, but also being willing to adapt as required along the way. Thinking outside the box, being able to, to diverge from the most obvious thoughts to open your mind to more ideas and pathways. We also asked STEM coaches how they approach problem solving and tackling complex challenges. Despite their specialities varying from computer science to marine ecology and medical research, there were some common themes among their answers. Many face challenges requiring a rethinking of how they do their work in order to improve processes and reduce unintended side effects. Adapting and being open to learning was a common thread. Across all these scenarios, the professionals highlighted creative and critical thinking, communication, empathy and ethics as key skills to support their technical expertise in solving the problems. One STEM coach, Parana Patil, discussed a wicked problem that she was involved in trying to find a solution for. A big question relating to the sustainable development goal number one, no poverty. The project was part of the Indian government's National Rural Livelihoods Mission, which provided people in rural areas with experiences that taught them how to borrow money for items that would make them more financially independent. It was a multi-step process that first created self-help networks, modelled the financial process of loan management by using an app especially created for this project, and equipped participants with both skills and experience that could be applied in a sustainable manner. Purana identified that curiosity deepens your ability to solve problems and consider them from different perspectives and creates more questions. Acknowledging that the problem solving process is not always one way or simple, it requires perseverance and energy to revisit and revise possible solutions. The importance of having a plan and setting goals allowed Purana to measure the level of success of her program. The importance of planning that was highlighted by Purana is also conveyed in the technologies curriculum as students are expected to discuss and evaluate solutions against their design criteria and user stories, knowing that they have met the criteria and can stop, even if the solution isn't perfect, is a real world skill that will benefit students in the future, as no one solution will likely solve a wicked problem on its own. Now we've explored some real world problems, let's talk about some wicked problems that we could adapt for primary school students. Remembering that a wicked problem has many parts, each of which can have more than one possible solution. Here are a few possible wicked problems for your students to explore. But we encourage you to help your students to identify their own wicked problems based on their interests and passions. There are many ways that you could start with a wicked problem in your class. One way is to start with the dispositions of curiosity and questioning, which we have modelled for the problem, what food to eat, healthy versus tasty. We note that in some communities, this is a privileged question. So we suggest choosing questions that are appropriate to your school context. For this question, students may recognise that this problem affects all people from all walks of life. They may have even raised this question at home. Why can't they have takeaway or pasta for every meal? It impacts people in a range of ways. If always eating healthy, kids might not like the food and they might not eat as much or they might complain more. And if they're always eating yummy food, they may not be meeting all of their nutritional requirements, which could result in them getting sick or not growing to their full potential. Students may talk to their parents about how they decide what they're going to eat for dinner each night. Or students might do a food survey of what students in their class eat for dinner over a week. Or finally, teachers might be able to help students understand dietary requirements and how to read food labels. To answer this problem, 
students should consider current constraints and limitations. Usually there are multiple facets to a problem. After research, students may find that they think that tasty food is usually high in sugar or fat. They could think about how they could recondition their palates so that they find healthier food more tasty. Another constraint is advertising. Companies make more money from processed food, but fresh food is more likely to be a healthy option. Another way to start this problem is for students to complete the three wise thinking routine by answering the following questions. Possible student answers might be, why does this matter to me? They might say things like, I only like eating yummy food, or I gag if I have to eat broccoli, or I want the same lunch as my friends. Why might this matter to the people around me? Students should be encouraged to think of their family, friends, the city and the nation. Answers could be, mum wants me to eat healthy so I can grow up big and strong. Mum and dad want to eat healthy so they don't put on weight. Dad says that people who don't eat fruit and vegetables are more likely to get sick. Or something like, sometimes eating takeaway, which is yummy, is easier than cooking. And finally, why might it matter to the world? Students might say, there are lots of costs for healthcare to look after people who are sick from a bad diet. We could save money if we don't go and get takeout. Or it would be a fairer planet if everyone had access to healthy food to live. Another way to get started with wicked problems is to use a lotus diagram. We know that wicked problems have many parts to the problem and they usually require more than one solution. And a lotus diagram is an easy visual way of keeping ideas organised. Here we are breaking down the problem of frequent sickness and cold and flus at school. You can see that in the centre we have our problem. Around that are some uh, ideas such as students could talk about different types of sickness, how, to get si how do people get sick? Um, they might also then ask how are we going to reduce sickness in school? On the outer squares, students come up with further ideas related that, to that topic. So for instance, how do you get sick? Students might note that you can have an accident. You might get germs from another person. You might eat bad food. This is one of the squares from our Lotus diagram where we're finally answering the problem of how could you reduce sickness at school? After having a look at all of the issues that relate to sickness in schools, students may come up with the idea that you need to wash your hands regularly, don't go near sick people, to stay home if you're sick so that you don't spread germs, clean surfaces regularly and don't share food and drink. Using Wicked Problems in your classroom will link to many parts of the curriculum. The general capability of critical and creative thinking is one aspect Students would be inquiring in their wicked problem, generating and analysing their solutions and completing a reflection process. Using wicked problems also links with the digital technologies, processes and production skills. As again, students are investigating and defining, generating and designing, and then eventually evaluating their solutions. In our Digital Technologies Plus X online course, we explore ways students may create digital games to educate different users around elements of sustainable practices. Identifying the user of a digital solution for a problem is a key element in the design thinking model. Possible digital solutions suggested include making interactive games from scratch or using microbit to create button sensors for quiz games or using co-spaces to create an augmented reality experience. When students engage with wicked problems, honing their critical thinking skills, they tackle real world challenges. By navigating the complexities of these issues, students develop curiosity, resilience and adaptability. Exploring wicked problems fosters a sense of social responsibility, encouraging students to become proactive problem solvers and contributing members of society. For more information about our digital technologies courses, visit caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au 